Okay, properties of special parallelograms. So um, we're going to look at some subcategories of parallelograms. Um, so let's remind ourselves what a parallelogram is. It's going to be a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides, where both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So I'm going to do a little definition sketch just right under where it says parallelograms here. Okay, so everything in within the circle is going to be a parallelogram. This is a Venn diagram here. Okay, so um, one of our um, categories um, is a rectangle, and I know you all know what a rectangle is, but let's define it. I'm going to do a little definition sketch how a geometry book would define a rectangle. It's one of these. Uh, it's not a very good one, but um, you know what I mean. Right? And then, so it's a quadrilateral, four sides, um, but it's a quadrilateral where all four corners are um, 90 degree angles, okay? Where, where all the uh, sides are perpendicular, okay? So that's what a rectangle is. So a rectangle is all, also going to be a parallelogram. The opposite sides are going to be parallel. So our definition, this is going to have four right angles, okay? It's a quadrilateral with four right angles. All right, and then over here on this right side, I've got a rhombus. And um, we haven't talked much about a rhombus yet. A rhombus is going to be a quadrilateral where all four sides are congruent. It's not just that the opposite sides are congruent, so it, a diamond shape kind of works here. Um, it's not actually always going to look like a diamond, but um, often it does. This is when we have four congruent sides in a, a uh, quadrilateral, okay? And then this part in the center, this is where a rhombus and a rectangle meet. So what are they, when you have four right angles and four congruent sides, this is the most special parallelogram of all. And it's called a square. And I know you know what that is too, but let's uh, define it. I'm not gonna write this out in words, but by definition, it's a quadrilateral, four sides, with four right angles, and four congruent sides. So it's a rhombus, it's also a rectangle, it's a special kind of rectangle, a square is a rectangle, and then it's also a parallelogram, okay? So that kind of shows the world and everything outside of here would be things that aren't parallelograms, right? Okay, all right, so let's, um, we're gonna look at some properties of some of these special, um, all, all three of these special parallelograms that we've just introduced. Okay, and first up is the rhombus diagonals theorem. So I've got a rhombus here by definition. It's a four-sided figure. All four sides are congruent. Um, every, every rhombus um, is going to have diagonals that are perpendicular. The diagonals are perpendicular. Okay, maybe some of you guessed, hey, they're going to be congruent. But just look at this, right? We've got a long diagonal and a short one. So just by looking at it, it doesn't seem like they would be congruent. And almost always they're not going to be congruent. Okay, um, But there is something else that is true about the diagonals and that comes up in the rhombus angle bisector theorem. So you can guess what these diagonals are going to do to the angles at the corner. They're going to bisect them just like it says in the name of this. Okay, So those two angles are going to be bisected by this long Um, by this long diagonal here, okay? And since it's a parallelogram, the opposite angles are going to be congruent. So actually all four of these angles are going to be congruent, okay? The, the shorter diagonal is also going to bisect the other two corners. And one mistake that I see people make is they'll put one dash in all of the angles in this, in this picture, but hey, this, this whole corner is obtuse, and this whole corner is acute, so these two can't be, con can't be congruent to each other in this picture. But these four angles in those two corners are congruent. These four angles in those two corners are congruent. So the diagonals bisect both, well, all four of the corners, okay? But both diagonals do that to their respective corners, okay? And now we've got the... Um, Rectangles Diagonals Theorem. It's kind of a lot to keep all of these um, organized because, hey, they're getting kind of similar, right? We also talked about what happened with diagonals in parallelograms, but 
now we're on to rectangles. So some people might guess that these two angles would be congruent. Well, they're not, right? Just looking at that, it doesn't make sense. And if you're forgetting and you don't have these in front of you on a test, it's hard to tell if you draw, you can kind of draw yourself a sketch to make a guess. But if you draw a rectangle something like this, it's a little hard to tell. But the more you exaggerate the rectangle, make it long and skinny. And then it's easier to tell what may or may not be true. So the more you exaggerate it, the easier it is to see that these two angles would not be congruent to each other. Okay, so it's not that they're congruent. They, um, all, the, I mean, the angles aren't bisected, right? Because these two angles are congruent. Um, but they are going to be, um, the diagonals themselves will be congruent every time in a rectangle, okay? So that's why I have the, um, so this um, diagonal is going to be congruent to this one, and that's why I have the, the letters. So I'll call one of the diagonals AD, the other one can be BC, okay? You can also see, looking at this, it doesn't look like we have right angles, so they're not going to be perpendicular to each other, but they are congruent, okay? Diagonals are congruent. That is the moral of the story there. Okay? All right. So, I don't have any... Um, um, anything about a square, but remember, um, a square is a rhombus, right? Um, a square is a special type of rhombus. Let me zoom back out here, right? Because a square, a square is part of this rhombus world here, right? And a square is also a rectangle. So that means a square is going to have all of these properties, okay? So we don't have theorems for them because they're already covered under the rhombus um, theorems and the rectangle theorems. The square is going to have, that's why I said it's the most special out of all of these. It's got all of the properties of rhombuses and or rhombi and rectangles. Okay, so let's move on to the next page. Okay, I had to make a cut because I made a mistake. All right. Um, so this first example here it says find the measure of the numbered angles. First thing I want to do is think, well, what am I dealing with here? It looks like a parallelogram, but it's not marked as one. It is marked as a rhombus. So this is a special type of parallelogram. You don't have to write out rhombus, but you want to be thinking, what are you dealing with? It's a rhombus. So that means I can use um, theorems that deal with, with a rhombus. Okay. And so I see I've got a uh, diagonal drawn here. So I'm thinking, well, in um, a rhombus, a diagonal is going to, um, is the two diagonals are perpendicular, but only have one here. It is going to bisect the um, corner angles. So those two are going to be congruent. These two are going to be congruent to each other, and actually the, the opposite angles are going to be congruent because it's a special type of parallelogram, right? So angles 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all going to be congruent to each other, okay? So, um, I don't know what they are going to equal yet, but I know they're going to equal each other. So just to make this a little quicker, I'm going to set it up like that. So whatever the number is, I don't have to write it out four times, okay? And then I'm also going to find the measure of angle 5, okay? And I'm actually going to start with angle 5 because it's the easiest one. So parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent. So angle 5 is going to be 100 degrees. Okay, now how am I going to find angles um, 1, 2, 3, and 4? Well, um, I've got a rhombus here, but I also have triangles, right? So let's use this triangle. So looking at this triangle, hey, this is an isosceles triangle. And so, because angles 1 and 4 are congruent, let, let's call angle 4x. I don't know what that equals. But whatever it equals, this has the same measure, so that would also be x. So now I can write an equation because all three angles add up to 180 degrees. So I can say x plus x plus 100 is 180. Okay, I can combine my like terms here. And now I can start solving for x by subtracting 100. And dividing by 2. Okay, so hey, that's 40. So all of those angles are going to be 40, have a measure of 40 degrees. Okay. 
All right, next example. Um, in rectangle A, B, C, D. Okay, where is rectangle A? Holy cow, there's no diagram. That's okay. We're going to draw our own. Okay, now you don't have to draw a diagram, but I think it's going to be very helpful. Now, one thing you should know, since this is called A, B, C, D, we know it's a rectangle, so let's just draw any old rectangle you like, okay? Okay, now A, B, C, D, I can put the A at any corner I want. I'm going to just put it in the top left just for fun, because that's where I want to put it, okay? But I have to be able to take a walk around the rectangle and read a, B, C, D. So it doesn't matter which way I go. I can go this way or that way. Um, but I know the B is going to have to be in one of these two corners. And let's just say I'm going to walk this way. So I'm going to put my B there. And then if I keep going around, C and D. So you have to be able to take a walk around the, the rectangle and read it like that. So if I had rectangle A, C, B, D, that would be different. Okay, because I can't read what the picture I drew A, C, B, D. All right, and that's super important because when I'm thinking about segment AC, now I've got a place to put it. Now I can see, visualize, oh, okay, this is one of the diagonals. Okay, so this is one of the diagonals, and then BD is the other diagonal. And hey, in a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. So that means 7x minus 15 is going to equal 2x plus 25. Okay, and now I've got a way to solve for x. So let's start doing that. I'm going to subtract 2x. And I'll add 15. And divide by 5. So there's my answer. Let's put a box around that and move on. Wait just a second. It didn't say find x, right? It didn't say solve for x. It says, it says find the length of the diagonals. So both diagonals are congruent. It means just find the length of either diagonal. They're the same, okay? So I'm going to find the length of AC. So AC I know is 7x minus 15, and I know that x is 8. And that's going to come out to 41. Okay, And you could test it out. If you plug it into BD, I'd have 2 times 8 plus 25. So 16 plus 25. Hey, that's also going to come out to 41. Okay, So there's the length of the diagonals. They're both going to have a length of 41. Okay, All right, moving on to the last example. So this time we do have a, uh, a diagram drawn for us some nice person. It was me. I did it, but it's already drawn for us. Um, so that's nice. Okay. It tells us that this is a polygon ABCD, and you see you can read that going around. Um, has these vertices. Classify this in all the ways possible. Okay. So, hey, it's a four-sided polygon. I don't need to write polygon because that's in the question, but it is a quadrilateral, so I can start with that without doing any work. Okay, now you could start making guesses. To me, it kind of looks like a rhombus. It looks like a parallelogram. It definitely does not look like a rectangle or a square. So I'm not really even going to check for those because it's very obvious that it's, I don't have right angles at the corners. But you can't assume that it's a, um, it's a, say, a rhombus just by looking at it or a parallelogram. So what we want to do is check. Okay, so. What I think I'm going to do first is check if it's a rhombus. Because if it's a rhombus, a rhombus is a special type of parallelogram. So if it's a rhombus, then it's also a parallelogram. So what I'm going to do is use the distance formula to check if the four sides are congruent. Okay, And here is the distance formula. So you subtract the x values in square. You subtract the y values in square. You add those results together and take the square root of the whole thing. Okay, so I'm going to use that on all four sides and see what I get. Okay, sorry, it's just focusing here. There we go. Okay, 
So um, I'll start with, just to keep track, I'll uh, always label what side I'm talking about. I'm going to use AB here. So let's try the distance formula with side AB. So I'm going to subtract my x's, 4 minus negative 2, and square. And then subtract my y's, I'll do 1 minus 4 and square. Okay, and then I'm going to simplify this. 4 minus negative 2, that's the same as 4 plus 2. And 1 minus 4 would be negative 3. Okay, and some people would say, oh, the squares and square roots don't undo each other. So this is 6 plus negative 3. Nope. Make sure you do the exponents first because the part under the radical is its own group. So I got the square root of 45, okay? Now, I could um, make that into a decimal or put it in simple radical form, but I just want to compare it to the other sides. I don't really care what the length is. I just care if it's the same as the other sides or not, okay? So I'm just going to leave that like that. Let's check BC. And this is going to get a little tight on space. Hopefully I have enough space here. Let's see. BC, um, for my x is 4 minus negative 2. And squaring for my y's, 1 minus negative 2. Let's do 3 squared. Go that way to save myself some space. Hey, root 45 again. So, so far I know that this is true, right? So let's keep going. Maybe I'll use this space down here. I'm, I'll go for CD now. CD axis, I'll do um, negative 2 minus negative 8 squared and negative 2 minus 1 squared. Negative 2 plus 8 would be 6. Negative 2 minus negative 1 is negative 3. Okay, my old friend, square root of 45. So, so far, all three of those sides are congruent. I'm feeling pretty good about this being a rhombus. Okay, all right, but we still need to check um, AD at the top. Even though it's at the top, let me use the space down here because I got a little more space there. So, let's see. Uh, for my x is negative 2 minus negative 8. And for my y's, 4 minus 1. So negative 2 plus 8 would be 6. 3 squared, running out of space. I'll go this way. And root 45. Look at that. So, hey, this is a rhombus. This says classify this in all ways. So quadrilateral rhombus. Now, a rhombus is a special type of parallelogram, right? So this is one way to prove that you've got a parallelogram when both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, right? So parallelogram. And there are all of our ways to classify this. Now, which of those is the most precise? So you've got to think about the different categories that we had from the beginning of the note. What's the most precise? So what's the smallest subcategory here? Well, if this was a square, which it's not, then that would be the most precise. This is a rhombus though, right? A rhombus is a special type of parallelogram, right? A rhombus is part of the parallelogram window, and there'd be an even bigger um, category called quadrilaterals, right? So um, my most precise name is going to be rhombus. That tells me the most about the figure. Because all rhombuses are parallelograms, and all rhombuses are also quadrilaterals. But a rhombus has those special features, so that is the most precise. And that is the end of the notes. See you next time.